Hi all, Mass Bankup from Kaiser Power Electronics. This is part 6 of the dual resonant solid state Tesla coil show controller build. What we are building today is the audio input panel that we were left to do in from part 4 as I chose to add some extra features that's in the analog interruptors and that's a analog audio input so we can have 6 normal instruments connected up to six Tesla coils or distributed out over one or many Tesla coils. It also features the holes in this video for the safety features, but we will go into a different video in part seven about the safety circuits. So for now, we're just going to drill out the same holes as I'm using the same panel. So let's get building. The panel we are using is a three unit 19 inch rack panel. And in this, I would like to mount 12 mono jack inputs, six potentiometers and six channel selectors. Now the channel selectors is more like choosing that I want to use the audio input into the analog interrupter. So this is more an enable. Now, why do I put in two mono jacks for each? Because um, the, I said that I could choose between playing one instrument on more coils but actually I can only choose to override the outputs from the master interrupter and not selecting um, like one, two, three channels. So I did not make a matrix like that. So what I can do is use these regular audio cables here. So say you have an instrument going in here, you can just plug that straight on from here to here. So they are just in parallel. And by having, I think this is four cables, three cables, four cables, um, then I can get one instrument or two instruments to play all six coils. So that is pretty much what I want. I also just have to get a few more of these cables. Now the audio mono jacks, well, very simple. Not much to say about that, industry standard. So all we need now is some masking tape, get the panel drawn up for the meshes written down here and drill some holes. All holes in the panel have been made for the audio interrupters and for the safety features, which will be in the later video. So I just have these regular jack chassis sockets, 6.35 millimeters mono, open type. Uh, just has a ground here where you mount it and you have the positive lead here isolated. We have the six colors used for the, the six channel inputs, so we will keep the same color code for all signal inputs. Uh, throughout the six interrupters. So let's get all this mounted. This is unfortunately as far as I can get with this faceplate on the workbench because I did not prepare the wires uh, in the box. Other than that, I did mount the potentiometers and the switches. So yeah, we'll have to put this in and mount it backwards. And I did not make any connectors for this. So the important part to take away from this is if you're going to make changes to your project, make them earlier. So not to... Uh, Forget ourselves in all this project making, but also remember to drink some good coffee. To test the audio inputs, I will use my signal generator over here. We'll take a closer look at that later. How the uh, whole interrupter 
command pulse here is set up. And we are also measuring the signal going into a Tesla coil. So we are getting the signal being received by the optic fiber cable. The function generator, we will uh, use it to generate something like 10 to 500 hertz interrupting signal. Uh, it can do uh, pulse, square wave, sine, triangle and ramp. So we'll just go through those different modes and see how that signal looks and what we get over the Tesla coil. On the controller, we have the audio input. We have the frequency bandwidth limiter potentiometer here. We have a optical out to the Tesla coil. And we also adjust the on time with the normal interrupter knob for that down here, as we can hear. Whereas the BPS no longer has any effect, as that's controlled by the audio input. We have a square wave, and let's turn up the on time. We can follow that here at the pulse width. 50, 150, 250. And if we get a little bit closer, we can see it 290, 295. So very close to the 300 it's built for. Let's zoom out again. We see three peaks now. Let's try to turn up the frequency. And the potentiometer is on the audio input is set for the maximum setting, which is 500 hertz cutout. Four hundred hertz. And it starts cutting out at four hundred and ninety hertz. So try to turn the potentiometer down. So now it starts cutting out. around 200 hertz. So the frequency limiter works just fine. So let's get back at some 100 hertz here. Let's try to change the waveform. As we can see, we have the yellow input here. Let's try a sine wave or triangular ramped or inverted ramped and we can go back over and try the pulse and even inverted pulse so as we can see no matter how long the signal is we do not get anything longer than the designated on time or to the frequency only one 300 microsecond long signal from no matter how long the audio signal is. Thank you for watching part 6 of the dual resonant solid state Tesla coil show controller build. We got the audio interface done and we tested it with the signal function generator. And just to round this video off, let's try to play a square wave sound file just found randomly on YouTube. So let's just hear how that actually turns out. And it's very old school uh, SSTC uh, sound like. Very distorted. But it will work in some kind of emergency uh, situation where the mid interface fails, your PC shuts down or yeah, just have all sort of problems with what you had planned. Well, this is meant for that, that backup plan. So if you, as me, really do like good coffee, be sure to grab a mug from the merchandise store. Until next time, see ya.